What's up? Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because of course it would not be a week without doing a Ghost Adventures review. But before we jump into that, I wanted to just let everybody know that uh, YouTube is still acting up with my channel so I'm probably going to either do smaller versions of my videos on Fridays and Saturdays or just Friday uploads in general. That's just because I'm putting a lot of time management into YouTube and maybe I need to balance myself a little bit better with other areas of my life. I am not giving up on YouTube yet completely. I will still be here at least every Friday night. But in the meantime, let's get to it. Let's talk about Brenda and her family on the Navajo reservation. So the first thing I have to point out with Ghost Adventures was the really eerily creepy, almost out of this world sound that they captured. It was like that cosmo, cosmic sound that Zach had captured. They didn't really point this out as being, you know, UFO related or out of this world related. But what I do want you guys to do is I want you to research a guy named Chuck Zakowski. I've talked about him before. I follow his YouTube channel. I actually got to know Chuck fairly well. He's a wonderful guy that lives in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Chuck does actual UFO investigations along with cattle mutilations. And this sound that Ghost Adventures had picked up on the Navajo reservation inside of Brenda's house actually sounds eerily strange to some of the things that Chuck Zukowski has captured during his investigations of UFOs and cattle mutilations. So if you guys can research him, look him up, seriously, compare notes, see what you guys think about this sound. Personally, I definitely think it could be somehow UFO related. I know they didn't touch base on, you know, any alien interaction or, uh, you know, if they'd had any previous discussions on having contact on the Navajo reservation, but nothing would surprise me at this point. And I really thought this sounded interesting to go along with some of the other evidence that has been captured previously by Chuck. Check it out, let me know what you guys think below in the comments. Maybe you guys can correlate it with me as well. The next thing I thought was most interesting was how affected Brenda was, the mother. Brenda was actually still mic'd up and she went into the other room and began praying through the microphone and the audio tech could actually hear Brenda praying. I thought this was really a big deal, especially if you refer back to my previous video or even when Ghost Adventures actually did the investigation of the skinwalkers. I feel like this could somehow be related to, you know, witchcraft, summoning in demons, and maybe that was why she was so frightened asking God for forgiveness, all that stuff. She kept saying, please God, forgive me for my sins. So of course, I wanted to ask you guys, do you think because she was praying in that way, she thought in her head it was somehow related to a skinwalker? Why did Brenda actually leave the room to cry or mourn or pray? Because remember, the Navajo Nation is not allowed to speak to non-Native Americans regarding the skinwalkers. So what is it about seeing this apparition that is a child with no face that makes it so frightening? I have said repeatedly in all of my videos, one thing I don't trust is child EVPs. Not only has Ghost Adventures proven over and over again that actual EVPs or any sort of evidence captured that is a child or children's voices can certainly be demonic. Why is this the case? When something is dark and that bad, it's not going to present itself to you as fallen angel form, if you will. It's going to try to present itself to you in some sort of a way that it will shapeshift so that it makes you trust 
whatever form it's in. So if this apparition is coming to you as a child without a face, Yes, it's scary, but in a way it's also kind of sad. Can you imagine if it was an apparition of a child without a face? Was that a painful death? Why are they appearing this way to you? This is a way to not only get you to trust the apparition, but for you to be curious about it. Why does it not have a face? All I will say is these are the leeriest kind of apparitions that you can run into. Any of my investigators that are out there, always watch out for eyewitness accounts stating that they are worried and concerned because they've actually seen children, if they've gotten children or child apparition voices. Just be safe out there, guys. Anyone that runs into a child apparition, be extremely cautious. How did I feel about Aaron being in All Alone? Well, probably the same way you guys felt. Obviously, Aaron was having a really hard time dealing with the trailer in itself. It was almost like there was a portal in the back of the trailer. He heard all of the loud bangs and noises, which once again correlated with my skinwalker video, which I found very interesting, is a warning sign of a skinwalker can be banging on the windows, banging on the walls, banging on the doors. It's basically their threat to let you know that they are coming. Aaron got so upset that he actually had to physically leave the trailer and ended up getting sick. He was sitting in the van for a remainder of the night. Then you heard pounding on the van as if it had kind of followed them. It was very, very interesting. Some of the best evidence probably I've seen Ghost Adventures have in a long time because it wasn't just apparitions, it wasn't just the SLS cam. They had actually captured physical audio evidence of the beats and the, and the bangs happening on the van and outside of the actual trailer. So what happened to Aaron when he was slurring and ended up passing out or saying he wanted to go to sleep in the van? It has been assumed through paranormal investigating and basically data collection that when you are actually exposed to a high level of electromagnetic field, that it actually almost can make you lose consciousness. So when these levels are this high, yes, it could potentially be a portal, but speaking from a skeptical, paranormal, scientific side, we can't really prove that you know actual portals exist. But I would definitely say that whatever Aaron had encountered to make him feel like his lips were actually swollen, it looked like he felt like his mouth was numb, his tongue wasn't even working, it had to have been some really high levels of electromagnetic field. I really wish that Aaron would have been holding a millimeter during that time so we could have seen some sort of reaction going on. One thing I also really miss about Ghost Adventures is for a while they were wearing like Apple watches and Fitbits so they could see if their heart rate was increasing when they're actually interacting with the other side. If there is a high level of EMF, does it cause your heart rate to spike the way Aaron got so nervous and left the trailer? So that is one thing I miss for sure. The last thing I have to say with this review for Ghost Adventures is Zach did state um, in, the, I think it was more towards the end of the actual investigation, he said, um, this isn't your land, this isn't your territory, you have to leave. And it seemed like that really stirred up some of the energy. If there is one thing I have ever learned <laughs> being on the reservation, especially since I am Cherokee Indian and since I am registered with my tribe, it is never state to the dead that this isn't your land, this isn't your territory, and you must leave. <laughs> That's definitely one way to encounter receiving an attachment possibly permanently for the rest of your life. One thing about you know dealing with Native Americans or Native American land or tribal land or even in this case it could be a skinwalker is disrespecting the land or disrespecting the dead. We don't know if this was dark and demonic. I'm assuming by a child with no face that is basically trying to choke or hold someone down. It is probably something possibly evil at this point. We can probably determine that. But it still doesn't give you the right to go in and say, this isn't your land, this isn't your territory, you must leave. That's just not the most respectful way to deal with any sort of apparition on something like Native American land. So just keep that in mind when you guys are investigating is to really be conscious of how you're speaking to the spirits. Zach has said that you know he's kind of transferred from being this first very macho front forward guy that would basically encounter anything and provoke it. 
He has now said that he only provokes entities or energies that are bullying people or harming people. So I do respect him for growing and having a distinct difference. Although you still have to be respectful when you're going into somewhere like a tribal land. And I'm sure any of my senior investigators that are out there will agree with me. What did you guys think of the episode? Make sure you guys leave me comments below. I love to get feedback from you guys. Make sure you give my video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on social media and I will catch you guys next time.